both vets. You served in Iraq, um, uh, and I, I served in Afghanistan, and we both uh, find ourselves in New York right now. And uh, I, I think in different ways, we've, we've both uh, spoken out um, against the continuation of these forever wars. But since the Biden administration's announcement of the withdrawal from Afghanistan, we've really seen this narrative uh, against using the term for forever war. And I'll be the first to point out, it's not an analytical term. It's not a deeply precise term. We could use other ways to describe the, the conflict from a polit political science perspective or a strategic perspective. And yet, forever war, uh, you have argued, is a useful term for communicating the last 20 years to the American people. Yeah, I have, I have, and because it, uh, it's a term that clearly resonates with, with regular folks that don't live and die um, with uh, national security and foreign policy uh, every day uh, of their life. And um, that's how it's supposed to be in a republic, right? Uh, their, their vote matters, their opinion matters. And um, <clears throat> forever war, as amorphous as it is, as vague as it is, it's how a, a, a lot of folks um, uh, across the 50 states of our, of our nation um, relate to uh, a, a, a American foreign policy, uh, specifically uh, matters of, of war and peace. Um, you know, when we live in an era when uh, folks in Congress don't know where we, where we have troops in, until uh, uh, they get killed. Um, so uh, it's, it's uh, unfortunately all too normal uh, for everyday citizens to be surprised uh, that uh, uh, their ideals and their taxpayer dollars are being used in places they're not familiar with. And I think that is, a, that is why uh, uh, some national security folks, um, wonks or otherwise, feel so passionately uh, about this term and, and, and dislike it. Um, uh, it's, you know, they'll, they'll couch it up uh, in, in kind of these highbrow intellectual arguments. But no, I, I, I think the root of it, at least for, at least for some of them, is that uh, this allows regular people to connect. And what do you think um, that the, the reason for that discontent is? And why do you think it's become so accepted in, in some circles in Washington and even sometimes in media coverage of the forever wars um, that perhaps uh, foreign policy and war should be decoupled from the domestic political conversation and de be decoupled from the election cycle, almost as if it's, it's illegitimate for these these wars to be part of presidential debates or elections and that, wow, it's such an inconvenience that a presidential election might affect whether withdrawal happens or not, even though this is uh, the leader that the people of the United States, you know, elect. Well, you know, it's the most natural thing in the world for specialists to resent generalists weighing in, right? You know, um, people that work at the think tanks in D.C., people that uh, uh, are aspiring to be policymakers and, and maybe be part of an administrative team down the line. Um, you know, th yeah, they know stuff. Uh, they know a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, the last 20 years have, have shown us, if nothing else, that that doesn't necessarily translate to uh, uh, successful war making, right? Um, and if we are going to be uh, a republic and, 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 and aspire to be a healthy republic at that, uh, 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 trying to uh, somehow uh, inoculate uh, uh, you know, an entire realm of, of policymaking decisions uh, from, from the way our democracy has conducted itself for uh, uh, 200 plus years now, I mean, that, what, what, what an incredible admission uh, uh, of, of failure that you're not even go that you're willing to not even attempt to communicate to voters uh, uh, that, that this matters to them that this matters to uh, uh, if not their sons and daughters uh, the sons and daughters of their neighbors. I wonder why is there so much criticism and ridicule directed at these terms like forever war and endless war as, as being perhaps a, a shallow description of things or superficial uh, analysis, but there's very little criticism directed at the word salad of, of excuses for why we should stay the course another six months, another year, another two years, and ultimately another decade. Yeah, I, I, I think my favorite of those, I can't remember which 
think Tank put it to, uh, put it put it out there. Uh, uh, forward defense in depth. Uh, it's it's not war. People are dying. We're killing people, but it's not war. It's forward defense in depth. And you're just like, man, I, I'm sure you were assigned Orwell at, in school, but you need to <laughs> you didn't read him close enough um, it, when you're using terms like that it, sincere, sincerely. Uh, you know, it's a good question. You know, to to, to you, you cited the folks that it, it, that at least had the intellectual honesty, uh, uh, few and far between. But but uh, some of them did say no. Uh, this is a this. You know, I, I I disagree with them wholeheartedly. But you know, when, when I was in uniform, McCain was the only person who at, at the time was willing to outright say this is a generational conflict. If we're going to do this right, we need to be here for 30, 40, 50 years. And you know, people people freaked out on him, uh, it, 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 even even within the Republican Party. But at least, you know, I, I disagree uh, uh, tremendously with with his with his takeaway from that. But at least it was intellectually honest, right? And and God knows these these discussions need need that, that kind of honesty and clarity. Um, some perhaps haven't had um, haven't scrutinized this enough that they've reached the conclusion that uh, uh, this really is going to be a, a generational conflict. Others maybe kind of instinctively deep in their souls understand that there is something tremendously un-American about, you know, uh, wh whether these are imperial aims, I don't know. But, but you know, staying and in, staying in occupying uh, uh, in countries this many decades, you know, the, the comparison is, that, I mean, this is what Britain did. This is what Rome did. Imperial Britain. Imperial Rome. Right. And, and uh, you know, I think some folks, these are tremendously smart folks that we're, we're talking about. Uh, they know that uh, uh, admitting that, even even quietly, even qua uh, even qualifying it, is going to cause a firestorm uh, politically, uh, uh, because ultimately that's how you shut down these these wars, right? Is is, is is which is how the system was designed to be done. And as a, a final point, I mean, where do you see the future of forever war and endless war going? We. In some sense, the cynic in me thinks we're ending these conflicts uh, or we're ending the U.S. military role in Afghanistan, hopefully. Maybe it will happen in, 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 with respect to other places uh, such as Iraq. Um, but do you see us giving up on this concept or do you, do you see it as just redirected energy somewhere else, perhaps East Asia? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, also a fellow jaded vet uh, who, um, you know, I, 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 think, I think President President Biden and many folks in his administration, uh, uh, you know, largely agree with many of the things we've we've said today, um, and 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 feel like they're actually seeing seeing through an end to the forever war. But no, no, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the same time, then they figure out a different way to legally justify the you know the bombings um, in Iraq that happened last month. Um, uh, you know, we're still uh, just had a recent incident in Somalia. Um, uh, no, I, I, I think the forever war uh, will do what it has done uh, very well for the last 20 years. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, adapt uh, to the cir political circumstances presented and endure. There's, there's, there's so much entrenched power. There's so much money. Um, uh, and the, and, and there, there are some true believers on that side of it that, that, that really just, I think, view the world in a fundamentally different way than I do. Um, the only way... Uh, that uh, I think the forever wars can truly be ended is a sustained effort by American voters um, led by uh, American activists keeping, keeping the onus on this, right? And uh, I, you know, I'm not a pacifist. Um, if we need to intervene, uh, 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 be it an airstrike uh, or, or you know, on a macro level, um, I'm open to it, you know? Uh, the world is a dangerous place. This is, a, this is a republic. Bring it out to the open. And I, I understand that has some drawbacks. But uh, 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 it's morally and ethically honest. And if we are the country um, that we tell our children uh, this is, if we are the country that, that we aspire for it to be, uh, the least we can do is, is, is have the powers that be make a public, open decision before deciding to go kill people in, all, in, 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 in our name with our money.